Let's now give it up for our sponsors. They are the one, the only, the top dogs in town. If you ever need to deal with car insurance, if you've ever had an accident, you need a claim, listen, these are the guys that you need to contact. I'm going to put you in touch with Nicole at G4 Claims. Nicole, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Oh, top of the world, couldn't be better. I was just uh, saying half air there that I love the big G4 Claims at Ibrooks, the big board. No, you were not, mate. You were saying half air, you seen the big G4S. <laughs> 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 you <laughs> <laughs> sorry mate, sorry mate. Wait, wait a wee, wait a wee, yeah. I'm doing, I'm doing this bit, Bob. Just stop. Accidents happen. <laughs> I teed her up. I teed her up. Who can help with an accident, boys? Who? Uh, Four claims. Four claims. All right. So if you're involved in any sort of accident, I kind of had said last week as well that I think we should try something new where maybe I'm telling you about different scenarios and different things that my customers have phoned me in with that I've been able to help with. So one that we actually had this week was someone who was driving their recovery truck. So they've got their recovery truck, they're driving along the road, they've got someone's vehicle in the back, they're trying to help someone else and boom, someone crashes into them, damages their truck. This is their livelihood, they're self-employed, this is their business, they need to get back on the road. Guess who helped? G4 claims. claims. Yes. Uh, yep, you can cover yep. any sort of vehicle, prestige, mainstream, commercial. We can cover that. We'll source that for you to make sure you're back on the road. You're not losing any money. I know what it's like now with COVID and everything. People are already down in cash. They want to make sure that if they've got a job, they can get out there and they can do it. And we're going to help with that. So we provide you with a like for like compatible vehicle to your own vehicle. We'll get your vehicle repaired recovered from the scene of the accident, whatever you may need. We'll get all of that sorted for you. If your vehicle is written off, we'll recover the pre-accident value for your vehicle. We'll make sure you're totally, totally sorted. If you're injured at all from the accident, we'll recover your um, compensation for your injuries. And all my services are free of charge. They're all billed to the at-fault insurance. I will never, ever, ever bill you guys. If I can't help you, I'll give you the best advice possible and I'll show you where to go. I'll never bill you for my services. So it's G4 Claims. It's um, 01698 767 172. We're on all platforms, social medias. It's G4 Claims, not at fault claims. Me Me <laughs>
So mm-hmm. he had, uh, he'd asked me, he said, look, it's only a wee part, but you want to be in a film with James McAvoy? And it's, uh, and it's an Irving Welsh script. I said, yeah, I want to be in a film with James McAvoy with an Irving Welsh script. And Eddie Marsan's in it, yeah, I want to be in that film. Um, mm-hmm. And he was so apologetic when they had to cut the scene because it was one of those ones where it was, it was just a time thing. Um, I mean, I thought I was the best thing in it. But, yeah. you know. I've got a question, right? I've, this, is, this is a question I thought of, right? Right. right? See see that there? You said the director loves still game, right? What's the what's the biggest thing that you have, or the best thing that you can go, wow, that's happened to me because I still game? It doesn't need, need to be a job, but maybe it's something like, maybe something happening, you know, getting an upgrade in a plane or something. Is there anything out there where you thought to yourself, wow, man, that still game really paid off? I'm just thinking that because there's been so sort of few wee things, like I remember... I remember going, I think I'd gone to look at a car at the, um, the Phoenix garage in, in, in White Inch. And there's a wee, there's a wee van there, there's burgers and that. And I, I was really starving. So I went to get a bacon roll and she put it in there and I went to pay for it. She says, no, that, that one's on us for making everyone laugh. Oh, that see me things that are nice, isn't it? Oh, no, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. I'm, it's I, I'm sure, I'm sure I've had freebies out of Greg's and that. And, um, right. just trying to think that the biggest thing, um, never. Yeah, I thought you were going to say you got a motor there. That's where that was going, but no, no, sadly not. <laughs> no, 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 there was. Actually, I tell you one thing that happened. It, it's, it's not the thing. Is it's not still game. It was. Um, I kind of got a treadmill for free, but that wasn't really a still game thing. So that's that's not strictly true. But you know, a, a, a guy got in touch on Facebook and said, "Look, massive fan, massive fan. Um, I sell tropical fish tanks." <laughs> would you come? Would you come and uh, do, we're doing a relaunch of our shop? And if you come and relaunch the shop, I'll get you a a, a bang a bang up to date topical fish tank. Um, and I, I declined. It was a very kind offer, but I'm just not I'm just not that into fish. So um, yeah, but yeah, it's do you know what? It's I, it, it's the goodwill that it gets you. Right. It's the fact that I reckon I honestly reckon I'm probably tempted to bait now. I reckon I, I would always have honours in a fight because of still Aye. game because Aye. it's got it's got such a, a kind of blanket appeal that there'll tend to be people that will do wait a minute that's the guy that's still game. Aye, on the flip side, because mm. you've been in still game, you probably would never end up in a fight either. Mm. Possibly, yeah. Also, given that I'm the I'm the most cowardly, I couldn't punch a hole in the meringue. I'm awful. I've never been in a fight. I know I, I know how to avoid them. He's oh, telling lies, man. You should see him playing five. He's an absolute destroyer. Well, see, he, he, hangs up, he hangs about with Jordan Young and all. You'll know if I end he'll kick fuck out everybody for him. <laughs> well, thing is, do you know when I did that two foot tackle and still game? Do you know the walking football episode, right? Aye. Aye. What's hilarious about that is, he, Stephen, you know this. That's not how I play football. I'm very low impact, am I not? I mean, I'll maybe tip your heels, but only because you're too quick for me. I'm never ever going to be on the deck, am I? No. My shirts, my shorts are always immaculate. Aye, aye, I, swe- aye. I sweat horribly. I start- <laughs> Not sweat, honestly. <laughs> Even when I'm really fit, honestly, you could grow rice. I sweat so much. It's just <laughs> grow not, rice on me. It's not a pretty sight. Touching, touching on football, Sanj. Obviously, you're a good, you're a good Celtic man like myself. Aye. What, what brought you? What indoctrinated you into Celtic? Going to, going to a Catholic school. I said, had, a, big, fan had, of- had a lot to do with it. Um, <laughs> I so it's a weird one because so. We come to Glasgow when I'm five years old and I love football, but I don't have a team. My dad's not interested in the slightest. So I kind of have a pick of teams, you know, and go for Rangers, I go for Celtic, go for Thistle. Even if I wanted to go for St Mirren, you know, Morton Green, it's not that far away. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mary Hill Juniors. Um, (laughs) But I I end up going to Catholic school and um, partly as well, because I know that the, you know, Celtic was originally set up to serve the Irish community in Glasgow. And I would love for there to be a similar thing for the Asian community in Glasgow. I'm still waiting for there to but, be the first well, Scottish why, Asian why don't, footballer. Why don't you start it yourself? Can't be asked. All right, fair enough. <laughs> no, no, but I'd, um, do you know what? I, the, the number of Asians I know that play five, um, do you remember a guy called Jazz Jutler? He used to be... Aye! He aye. played Rangers Reserves. He was a captain of the Rangers mm-hmm. Reserves. Mm-hmm. He was, he used to really, going to be a policeman. I think he had to in the end because his knee aye. gave him jit. But he was like, the, they, they had big plans for him. He played was like Gaza and all that. Uh, uh, I, I think he went to Morton and then Aye. and then I think he might be a cop now, but I'm pretty sure that he grew up in Bishop Briggs where I grew up. I, I think he was cousins with pals of ours. And I met him a couple of times, lovely guy. Mm-hmm. And I just remember thinking, I really want him to do well, just Aye. because there was all these reasons. That, the thing is, is that I always, I've got this theory, the reason there aren't any Asian footballers yet is that to become a footballer, your parents have to be really into football because they're the ones that take you to training 
They're the ones that are buying the expensive boots. They're the ones that are out four days a week, taking you here, there, and everywhere. If your parents are into it, you, you're just not going to be able to pursue a career. So I guess my generation are the first generation to be totally to football. So it'll be my children's generation that will be the first, actually. And mm. this, is, this is actually very, this is very salient. Um, so I'm 50. I turned 50 last year, right? Uh, and um, uh, my boy, he's 14 now. And uh, he really loves his football and he plays for, for Broomhill Sports Club and, he, and, he, and he's a good wee player. And my ambition was to keep playing football until I could invite him along to our games. Now, I had 16 or 17 in my head because that's the, that's the youngest player I played with was 16 or 17, someone's son, right, at sevens or whatever. Right. Now, the other night, playing fives at Fair Hill Monday night, we were desperately short of players. It was a bit of a COVID ping situation, right? So everyone in the group, you know what it's like scrabbling about for plus ones. And I said to Vinny, right, you're getting promoted, you fancy a game. And he was absolutely shiting it. He scored five goals. Brilliant. So Brilliant. my boy is, I think he'll be the generation, it'll be his generation. It'd be, it'd be great if it was him, but I think it'll be one of his generation that'll be the kind of, the, 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 the I was going to say towel holder, I mean candle holder for um, for uh, Scottish Asian footballers. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to that day. Did you, did you say your boy's name is Vinny? That's right, aye. Vinny Coley's a footballer name and all that. Isn't Vinny Coley? Aye, Vinny Coley sounds right, doesn't it? And also, aye. everyone thinks, everyone says, oh, do you name after Vinny Jones? Who would name their kid after Vinny Jones? <laughs> <laughs> the thing about the name Vinny is, I'll tell you where I got it from. We were, um, when I was at uni, uh, at Glasgow Uni, 30 years ago, there was this really handsome Asian guy, right? Really handsome, but he was a bit Bollywood, you know? He had this kind of quite, quite big hair and he had these this red jacket with boxy shoulders, a bit Bollywood. And um, I remember thinking, oh, he's quite a charismatic guy, but a bit Bollywood. And uh, I found out his name was Vinny. I thought, oh, what an arsehole, giving himself an Italian name. That's a, bit, <laughs> that's a bit of a thing. You know, there are Asian guys that call themselves Rocky, right? <laughs> so then I find out that his name is Vinny and it's spelled V-I-N-A-Y and it's actually an ancient Indian name, like a proper ah, dish. Right, so I've, that, that went in the hard drive. So that's why my boy is called Vinny. So he's not- And is, is your boy V-I-N-A-Y as well? Yes, he is, I. Right, but see, I always see the cynical side of things, right? Like the business side of things now. It baffles me why there hasn't been a team that even have bought, a Scottish team that have bought, yeah. like an, an Asian player. Just in terms to, of the market to, to exploit. I, to, it opens mm -hmm. up such a huge market, you yeah. know, and it, it baffles me like there's never been any, like, Indian players mm -hmm. coming to right. Celtic or Rangers or anything like that, you know? You're absolutely right. I mean, did you watch the the Real Kashmir? Oh, loved oh, it. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. loved it. Brilliant. Brilliant. How much you superb. love Davy Robertson as well? Oh, oh yeah. Did, was... did we not? Did we not have somebody come on the open line that had played for Real Kashmir or something like that? No, that right, you had David Robertson on the show before we started. Aye, we I did. Think you did Aye, he. It was when he was. It was during the, their um, their their they, they had stopped for the season, wasn't it, John? That was Robertson the COVID. Week. Yeah, no, that, that was like, it was like it was a couple of years back. Yeah, I David Aye. Robertson came on in close season, and he just came over. And all he wanted to get was I remember it, Iron Brew I, pastels. I, I and he went back into a bag full of Iron really? Brew pastels. I he put me onto them by the way because I've never tried them before. I've tried. I've, Iron I've got Brew. them. I've got them in the glove compartment of my car. But I'm amazing. <laughs> the ones. The true ones. They're, they're superb. What? Well, but see what I loved about the the documentary. Obviously, it showed everything. But it was the fact that he was over there. And he was on like the same wage as a postman or something like aye, that. He was aye, totally yeah. doing it for the love of the game and yeah. getting experience and stuff like that. But that was a mega eye opener watching that. I can yeah. believe oh, some aye. of the sites haven't they stopped training because of the the shootings and, and everything like that. I know. Aye. It would be it would be you quicker though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Aye. You know I mean? No, the biggest thing was the, the, the new Wi-Fi. I couldn't cope with that. I, <laughs> I know. I, that was. I, I know what you mean. Because do you not remember though. Was it not like they were trying to find out like? Had there not been some kind of incident and they couldn't His find wife out couldn't get in touch to, to, yeah. to find out if he was safe. Yeah. Aye, that's right. Yeah. speaking about, is I know, is I know the, I'm sure Rangers signed an Indian uh, player for the women's team last year, but I don't think she, I don't think she signed on for this season, but I'm sure. Aye, she, she's left, she's just left. She was, Aye. she was something else, man. Yeah. She was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. I know that's not the first thing you should say about a footballer. But John, I, John, John, I mean, John, come on. Can I, can I be honest? Twenty twenty one. Can I be honest? And I'll say the same about Jack Grealish. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Oh my God, the the, the calves on that boy. Aye. <laughs>
Oh my! A hundred million bucks. That's mental. And that's insane. That's cheap for those cars. So, Sanjeev, know, did, what, did you? So did you live in India till you were five? No, no, no. Lived in London. That's worse. All oh, right, right. Born right. in London. That's why I've got this weird kind of Anglified accent. Uh, so when I say word or bird or herd, I it should be word, bird, herd. But well, I, I've maintained that from I was three actually when we left London. But I've maintained that we um, anomaly. But it was dead embarrassing on the bus because I was totally like a, a single ticket to Bishop Briggs, please. <laughs> it did you know, to overcompensate because I also had my wee stupid St. Alan Wishes uniform on. I'm there like little Lord Fauntleroy with my national glasses and my blazer and my wee English accent. I thought, Christ, I could, could I be more of a target? <laughs> so I thought, I'll work on the accent first, but um, I, I managed to somehow. I'll, I'll never know how you've made it to the age you've made it to me. I, I, I swear, honestly, Chris, I don't know either. I think that's why I'm in comedy. I think it's because if you're an outsider in any way, you just have a very, very different. You only have to be two degrees to the left to see reality in a slightly different way, and that's enough for comedy, because that's what comedy is. It's just what Billy Connolly's really good at doing. It's like, how come I never noticed that before? Why did Billy Connolly notice it? It's because he's just a wee bit to the left. And, you know, like I was basically, I was, um, we were the first Asian family in our street. Uh, I was also getting, you know, I would I would go to weddings in London, they'd call me jock. Right, so I'm getting flack from the Asians in London, and I'm getting flack here. I'm, I also get sent to Catholic school. I'm one of three non-Catholics in the place. I can't do communion, confession, or confirmation. I actually, I'm sitting there while everyone's clambering over me to get communion. And as they clamber over, they say, "Heathen, heathen, heathen." <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just feel like an outsider. But you know, I mean, I'm, I'm saying that I'm not, I'm not worried about it because you know. It's not that you feel like an outsider as such. I had a very, very privileged upbringing. I grew up in Span Valley and I went to private school. Don't get me wrong. But it does give you this outsider's perspective, which has actually been really good for my career. So Aye. I kind of get played. Absolutely. So getting back to the football, um, who's your favourite Celtic player of all time? Of all time? Um, I mean, it's, it's hard to see past Henrik. Um, but, you know, Shane Duffy. <laughs> so that, that's he's my answer. That's he's your also, answer. Aye, 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 Stephen, aye. that's your answer. Aye, no, aye. I think I, I only ever got, I mean, I don't go to Parkhead much, but I went to the cup final in, I can't remember what year it was, it 2006. And mm. uh, just watching Henry up close, it's like, oh my God, you, you just appreciate it all the more. Aye. I mean, it's all the obvious ones, isn't it? Like, I, I watched a brilliant documentary about Jimmy Johnson last night that was on BBC Alba. And mm. I would love to see now he would have coached. Fuck's sake, he speaks Gaelic and all. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Again, he could probably sing as well. Um, but he, um, <laughs> but he, you know, he used to get kicked up and down the park, black and blue, Aye. and it didn't seem to be much to him, but he was clearly just made of steel. Aye. And uh, what a player, uh, Moravchik. I was, do you know what? Like, in terms of playing football, I mean, when I play football, I'd like to play like someone like Petrov or Stuart Armstrong. I quite like box to box players. Yeah. I quite. I'm not actually about scoring goals, which is a good job. I'm right, Stephen. But um, <laughs> I, 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 like, I like the midfield powerhouses. Um, Paul McStay, so, you know, I mean, what a Aye. player. So I, I, I quite like the mid Mravchik, you know. Um, yep. I, li I like the powerful midfielders, but um, I, I don't right. think they get much better than, than Henrik Larsson. Mravchik was like, I remember when you signed him, man, he was... <sighs> He was just class. He was just a magician, he? wasn't he? A magician. Aye, class. You know what? 350,000 for a 35 year old Slovakian at the time. Aye. I know. And I, I know. remember my mate phoning me and going, oh, well, oh, this Dr. Joe's signed some 35 year old Slovakian <laughs> jobber. Do you know what Aye. I mean? And he was no bad, but was he, man? He was, he was first, first, first game, he trapped the ball with his arse on the touchline, and I was like, this guy is tremendous. Aye. What's your favourite memory, Sanj? Looking back, Celtic memory, what's your favourite? Well, there was the um, the day I got married. This is a weird one because I wasn't at the game. I didn't even see the game live. But um, I got married on the 26th of August 2000, right? And me and my missus were, were posing for photos out the front of what is now the... It used to be the motor house. What is it now? The Crown Plaza. Yes. Because yeah. that's where our reception was going to be. Mm. And busloads of fans are going past and they're going mental and it's Celtic fans. So, was it the six and that was the 6 2 game. Aye. That was the oh, 6 2 I game. So I, I just have really, really strong and fond memories of that because it was the day I got married. And, and then you watch the game as well. It was a brilliant game. Even for the neutral, it's a brilliant game. But that was also heralding the Martin O'Neill era. And obviously, Aye. it'd been it'd been a tough time to be a Celtic fan in the preceding years, apart from you know, stopping the 10 in a row. But then it wasn't, 
yeah, then Martin O'Neill came, and that was the start of a very solid era for Celtic. And then obviously the UEFA Cup final um, was you know, mm-hmm. was 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 amazing. I mean, you think back as well. I know that the the Europa League gets short shrift, but the fact was Celtic nearly took Mourinho's Porto, who then went on to win the Champions League. So ah, you, know, you have to say that was quite an achievement. Uh, but I, my favourite Celtic memory isn't actually a football game. It's um, there was a I I got uh, it, it was the fiftieth uh, anniversary of the Lisbon Lions, right? And I got a, quite a late call for it. So basically, they said, "Look, cards on the table." Kevin Bridges has had to pull out because mm-hmm. he was doing a thing because President Obama was in town, right? Yeah. So he got wow. he got whisked off to do that. But got the LRC sat on. That's a fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him you said that. And um, <laughs> so he said, "Would you would you mind coming and just doing like a couple of minutes to introduce as Rod Stewart or something?" I said, "Of course, I'd love to do that." So um, this was whatever year that was, fifty years past sixty-seven. So yeah, four four years ago now. Aye. Mm-hmm. And what a great night it was! Just like all the surviving lions were there, and like Kenny Dalglish came, Con- Gordon Strachan, and. Um, was that the year uh, Alex Ferguson? Alex Ferguson. Yeah, he didn't uh, hang the hydro. Oh, it was magic. It was magic. All it was right. such a great night. And I got to go on stage and I got to do a, I got to do two jokes. I said, who doesn't love the Lisbon Lions? Everyone loves the Lisbon Lions. Well, I say that. Everyone except Mina. And they're dropped into the beat. <laughs> I said, Mina hates the Lisbon Lions. I said, why? Who hates the Lisbon Lions? Did I hate the Lisbon Lions? <laughs> and I said, why do you hate the Lisbon Lions? And she said, because they ruined our holiday. I said, what holiday? She said, Sri Lanka, they bombed the bloody airport. I said, that's a Tamil Tigers, you dozy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and then they did my other joke. I said, because that was the year that uh, um, that Brendan Rodgers had done 100 plus points, 100 plus goals, the unbeat, unbeaten all season. So I said, I I think I think that Brendan Rodgers is a superhero. You know, 100 plus goals, 100 plus points, unbeaten all season. But more to the point, he's the only human being to kiss Lee Griffiths and not get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> because there was he famously like had to fall out with Lee Griffiths and then he pulled him in and kissed him. Uh, and that people laughed for about a minute. I was gonna say, how did that go down, mate? Oh no, and then yeah. Brendan Rogers was next on stage after me. So <laughs> when I went back, he had this, he had this that amazing white smile which lit up the hydro. I thought, oh, thank Christ, I haven't I haven't um, offended him. Because I'd never met Brendan, I still haven't properly met Brendan Rogers. Um, before or since, so that that night was amazing. I, I was going down the stairs, down the escalator at, um, in in the in the moat house, where the kind of the build that was happening, and Bobby Lennox is waving at me, and I said, Bobby Lennox does. I went and said, you don't wave at me, I wave at you. <laughs> that's not the that's not the power relationship here. He's such a <laughs> lovely, such a lovely, humble man, you know. He's so a great guy. I was a great guy, and I met like Jackie McNamara, Roy Aitken, Christ. I mean, it was um, it was a beautiful night. I right. have you been on a plane with him? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do you make you big Ange then? Um, I think I don't I don't see him lasting the season. I think he, he's very outspoken. And clearly, you know, he's already said uh this wasn't the plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was hoping for some more players by now. Um I, I, I think the way the Celtic board are running things, I think they wanted a yes man, and I don't think they've got a yes man. I think maybe they thought if they got someone, well, obviously he wasn't plan A for a start, right? But I think they possibly hope, well, if it's someone with, with a lower profile that has more to prove, then he might just go along with what we're doing. But I, right. I think maybe he's got a bit more to say about it. I know. Because it's, I, frankly, it's a disaster. Man. It's a disaster. I, and I don't blame him for it. I don't blame him for it because he's, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I wish him all the best. And Christ, if he turns Celtic season round, then obviously I'll be happy. But... Yeah, I don't think he's proved himself at the right level yet. I mean, maybe maybe he is at the right level, and he, you know, and we're lucky we got him when we did. But you can't bring him in and then not give him anything to play with. So, do you, do you think it's, it's funny you say that as well? We never even spoke about this before, but the two signings as well. Told you, think? Do you think that's that that's came for the board day two signings because is Angelman out his way? Obviously, there's Joe Hart. He's a you know what I mean? World famous goalkeeper, as you say, 70 odd caps. But to me, that's a kind of, it's a signing with a board to kind of keep fans happy rather than what Ange wants to, who Ange wants to buy. Come on, mate. He's not came from out of space. <laughs> you think he doesn't know who Joe Hart and fucking James McCarthy are? No, I'm, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, but he, it doesn't see, you know, it doesn't feel like a, a, the two players that he would Do go you know for what? first. I think, I think it, Joe Hart's probably, um, He's seen that we need a goalie, right? And every team are going to have 
their their uh, their scouting staff and stuff like that. And uh, Joe Hart luckily became available, and we've managed to get him in. I think James McCarthy's probably more of one that's it's a can for one of a better phrase, a kind of jobs for the boys thing. He's a Celtic fan. Mm. That, He's what we're, what we're lacking, to be honest with you, in yeah, the middle of yeah. that park. He definitely mm. is what we're lacking, but we just need to be able to get him fit. And, and make keep sure him fit. Aye, exactly. Exactly, Stephen. So, I don't know whether... I, 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 what I will say is, I think Ange would probably have the final say on the mm. signings. You know what I mean? But um, there's going to be people in the background working on players that are available, and they'll then bring them to him. And if he wants to sign them, then it's up to him. Well, look mm-hmm. at the recruitment policy we've had for the last year. I mean, every single one's been pretty much... I mean, you can't say any of them have been successful, can we? No. I mean, maybe only Elian Well, and, I, and you, you, you've, got, you've got Turnbull as well, but I don't <laughs> think Turnbull's going to really fit into this system that we're playing. Mm. Um, hopefully I'm wrong, but yeah. you know, I'd, I'd like to see him... Uh, Further his career, but if he if he stagnates here and he doesn't he doesn't fan in that system, then I, I agree with you. La- the last few uh, transfer windows, Sanjeev, have been an absolute shambles. We could even that... sorry, me on you go. I was going to uh, yeah look over the road at, at Ibrox, and I know someone that works at Rangers, and I said to him, "Look, what's happening with Nathan Patterson? Do you think he'll stay?" And he said, well, "Stephen Gerrard adores him and wants to keep him on. In fact, they're looking at ways that they can play Patterson and um Aye, to have together, to have together." Aye. And I suppose similar to the way that they that Tierney and Robertson could play for Scotland. Aye. Yeah. And I thought that's a scary prospect. I don't particularly want to see that, you know, look down the barrel of that. Um, mm-hmm. so you know, obviously for most positions for Rangers, they've got backup and Celtic just don't have that. I mean I we bought you know Starfelt in, obviously, um made a couple of howlers, but the thing is I, I think it takes at least half a season for a back four to gel anyway. Mm-hmm. So I've I've sort of written this season off. Because look, the nine in rows away, that's done. That bubble's burst. We're sort of rebuilding from the bottom eight months after we probably should have. I'm kind of writing the season off because a back, you know, Martin O'Neill is a perfect example of that. You know, he built from the back forwards and we don't mm-hmm. have a back line just now. We well, just that's, don't. That's why I said to Stephen, you know, Stephen was saying about the Hearts game and I says, it's going to take time. Mm. And I, I'd love to think that they will give him time. My, my thought... For us to have a successful season this year, in my eyes, is the manager still being there at the start of next season? Yeah, yeah. I think you're right, actually. I think you're absolutely right. Because, um, you know, again, because the nine in a away, I don't know if the Celtic board are thinking, you know, look, because they've already advertised the European game, 19 quid per ticket, and that's mm-hmm. caused uproar. So are they just thinking, right, as long as the money still comes in, we can keep, you know, like experimenting with managers? Because the nine was gone anyway. Exactly. Are they that bothered about silverware? Or I don't. I don't know what. Because I, I really else. hope. I really hope that, there's a, that, that there is an uptake on it. But it's a. Do you know what? It's it's bold as brass charging for this first game back, man. Yeah. It's bold as. It really is. The, the, Especially when the, the the fans have had to watch on the telly yeah. last year while they've still paid for a season ticket. Yeah. So this was the think, chance to show a bit of goodwill, wasn't it? And, I, um, that's, I think, that's I, they've what not read the room. They've not read the room. I don't think. I don't think they ever read the room. I think they're a bunch of fucking entitled Tory bastards <laughs> that fucking think that they know better. When when See, really this is my don't. this is my problem with you, Chris. You never really see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> but, Honestly, was just getting to the point where I'm like, he's going to blow in a minute. They might be. Do you know what I mean, Gredo? Yeah, mate, you need maybe drink a juice, man. Aye, aye. You know what, I've, I've just ran know, out, man. I've got a fancy bottle now. Do you know what the most annoying thing about last season was? Well, there's many annoying things, right? But it wasn't even interesting. Rangers won it in March. I know. You know? Sure. It, I mean, for me, a successful season will be if we challenge Rangers to the last game. But I can't see Rangers not winning this season. I've kind, Like no. I say, I've kind of written off. But I would like to see... There are people saying our Celtic are going to finish second, even. Do you know what? I, 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 see, I seen somebody... Um, I think it was actually Tam Cowan... He put out what he thinks the season will be, and he's got Aberdeen finishing second. Mm-hmm. No chance, man. No chance. That's Rangers' spot. <laughs> Mate, I clip that wee bit, John. Uh, aye, I clip John. that wee bit. Put uh, that in a wee uh, parcel uh, only that for next year, John. That's good. Talking a lot of shit again. Ah, have man. I done it again? Don't even cottons for me, shit. Uh, anyway, Sanj, you got turned into a football chant. Am I right? Remember? Yes. Aye. Yes. Talk us aye. through that. Talk us okay. through that. I remember that. So I've been um, 
my brother-in-law, Steve, uh, Steve Prince, Stephen Linder, uh, they're heavily involved with Brohill Sports Club. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my kids have all been through it. So my girls did netball with it and my, my boys still plays football with them. And they uh, had a semi-professional team that they've had it the last few years. Was it four or five years? So last year, um, they get to play Hibs in the Scottish Cup in the fourth round. So uh, um, the game was at Aloha. And um, so I went along and the, and the young team... <laughs> All West Enders from Glasgow went, and uh, and they, they were they were. I, mean, I have to say it was, it was hilarious. It was completely nihilistic football chanting going on, calling Jack Ross for all kinds of things, which I will repeat, and all of them untrue. Um, and also, also Marciano, the keeper, getting it tight for absolutely no reason whatsoever. But that's not the point. But then at one point, um, and and I know the guy who started it because I think he goes to school with my daughters. I hear this 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 chant going. Um, You've got proclaimers, but we've got Navid. You've got <laughs> proclaimers. Got... So there's a film of me jumping about with a guy in the megaphone. That. That's bro, I just saw that. I know. It, so it was, it was a lovely moment. It was a lovely moment. We got beat for one, but you know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but it was a nice moment. It was a nice moment. That, I remember just like flicking through Twitter and just seeing you, mate. You, it was like you were tapping into some football casual days. You were getting right in about it, man. And you I were jumping. I, I, I had this. I, I had this puffer jacket, which could have been construed as a ski jacket. It was almost like I was I was ICF night in the rubbing the seats. This is funny, man. I'm watching it now. You watch it? It was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> You're right in a boot, aren't you, man? And the thing was, the proclaimers were at the game, and they were really unhappy. <laughs> Craig doesn't take, take my calls anymore. Was it like, was it kind of football factory esque? Like after it, he's me up and all that, and an alley oh, something oh, like that. Oh, there's a big old rumble behind the, <laughs> the skip behind Aldi. Navid, not and fuck at the proclaimers. Oh, that was it. I, 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 no, that way, I was, I was pummeling Craig like that. Says, take that, Craig. Take that, Craig. He's like, I'm Charlie. I'm Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> No, this genuinely, just genuinely happened, right? The, the Sunshine on Leith, the film, right? Um, uh, I wasn't in it, but um, I know the producers really well, so I got invited to a premiere in Edinburgh, and Peter Mullen was there. Mm -hmm. And I know Peter a wee bit, lovely guy, and he was leathered, and he, and he came up to me, and the proclaimers were there, and Peter came up to me and says, Shange, mate, can you help me out? Which one's fucking Craig? <laughs> <laughs> I said to Peter, Peter, Craig's got a black mark behind his right knee. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, but are we... Class, man. So, <laughs> Sag, see when you were only, see, like, when still game was happening, was there much football chat there? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, Ford has absolutely zero interest in football. Aye. And I asked him about it once, he said, it's just, he, he grew up in the gang garden, he said, you have seen people getting knifed over football every other Saturday, so just, he said, I was That's when my dad's pub were. Is that right? Eh? <laughs> Which pub was it? Uh, it was it was called the Big Glen. It's called the Garden Guard now. You're kidding. No, I'm not, Ford's I'm got not Ford's got Ford's got loads of stories from that neck of the woods. He he tells us he used to tell the story about um I think I don't know if it was specifically in that neck of the woods or maybe just like near the bars or whatever, but mm -hmm. it was the butchers. And he said it used to sell lair. Have you heard of lair? No. I said, what's lair? And apparently what it is is it's the lining of a cow's lung, right? And what you, I know, and what you do to it is you pour hot water onto it and it inflates and then you slice it off and you fry it and you oh. put it, yeah, I know. Oh, that sounds horrendous. Horrendous, aye. Yeah. So, so Ford was more interested in butchering than football. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Greg, Greg's, Greg's a Celtic fan. I, mean, I, I worked with him on the very, very, very first season of Off the Ball. So mm -hmm. Greg used to present it and it was me and Tam Cowan and Ian Ross that were kind of like the, the regular zoo guests. So Greg, Greg was a bit like me. He's a Celtic fan, but a bit of a plastic Celtic fan. You know what I mean? Nice. Um, and uh, um, Paul and Mark are, are both Celtic fans. Gav has got no interest in football. Mm -hmm. nice. So, I mean, it's pretty much... I mean, Paul is a big Celtic fan. I mean, I remember when we had the, um, the UEFA Cup run, he was... I think he went to a few of the games. And did he go to the final? I think he might have done, you know. So I think I've seen I think I've seen photos of him in Seville. Like, I think, I think mm. Paul's probably the, the most diehard Celtic fan. Um, mm. Just coincidentally, there are no Rangers fans in the still game production. I don't. Funny how I never get a part in any series, man. It's fucking amazing <laughs> sense now. I remember, I remember years ago, my agent phoned me up and I missed the phone call. Now that way, uh -huh. if you came off, I came off set, 
and I had a missed call and it was my agent that way you just get really excited man I was like fucking right blah 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 listened to the voicemail phoned her back man mentioned still game I was like right buzzing man got to the end of the conversation it was to voice over for the BBC to introduce still game on the telly for an advert <laughs> I turned up for I turned up today, I was like, and here's I in the feed and uh, <laughs> pure Ronald, I was like, I was like, I just want to be in it, I don't want to be fucking introducing it. <laughs> I still oh, done the gig. Of course so, you did. No, I, of course, um, man. Of course. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch, Sanj? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg used to live over the road, but he he's he's still in the neighborhood, but um no longer actual neighbours. Because uh, we um me and Fiona and Greg and Julia are dead close because their Benny and my Ruby were actually due on the same day, mm-hmm. the 12th of July, 2000. 12th of July. <laughs> nice. but, By the way, have you seen the size of Benny now? Oh, my God. He Jesus. is a, he's a, he's a big, friendly monster, isn't he, Benny? Aye, he's, he's a, a lovely, lovely boy. boy. Lovely <laughs> boy. So he was due. They were both due on the 12th of July, but they don't make bowler hats that small. So Benny, <laughs> Benny arrived a day early and my Ruby arrived 11 days late. But the laws are that common that they were meant to arrive. And they both turned 20 just like, like uh, uh, last brilliant. month. So, um, so we, we we're dead tight. Uh, Paul lives pretty close by. Gav is a wee bit further away. Um, I mean, just because of COVID and stuff, we've not seen each other much. Of course. Uh, Jane stays out Kings Parkway and, um, and, and Mark stays uh, south side. So, but we're still in touch. We've still got a, we've got a group chat. And uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's good fun. It's right. a great bunch of people. I remember... Um, Who's talking about it? It's one of the Spice Girls was talking about it. He said, it doesn't matter what happens. I can always talk to one of the other of, of the Spice Girls and, and only they will really know what I'm talking about because they were Spice Girls. And I sort of feel the same. That way we so, sell so, Game Boys. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? It's, um, it's, a, lovely, it's a lovely position. To it's like when people go to war. <laughs> Pretty I'm much. What about the war? I don't talk about it. So. Exactly. Exactly. It's exactly what it's like. <laughs> so, but obviously, Sanj, I know I'll probably see you kicking about down in Shield Inch once we return filming, but right. what else is in the pipeline for yourself, acting wise? Well, actually, at the minute, um, in fact, this morning, even writing series 10 of Fags, Mags, and Bags. So, that's where we do comedy. Brilliant. So, um, is, why has it never been made on air show? Oh, Christ. Oh, I wish I knew because I think that. I think been... it, would tra- it would translate well to a TV show. Well, 100%, what, what, it would. what I think, what I think is, whether you like it or not, everyone loves the corner shop. Everyone, like we talk about things about the wall of crisps and the chocolate stanchion and the car to sell. Whenever you walk into one of those shops, you kind of instinctively know where the Brillo pads are, where the yep. black, where the milk tray right. is, where the crunchies are. It's a home from home, right. and also everyone has to go into corner shop. If you, you know, if you, even if you were like, I was going to say Prince Andrew, maybe not Prince Andrew, right? if you were Prince Harry and you wanted a crunchy. Okay, you'll send them so much, you know, but you're not going to buy it online, is what I mean. I mean, you, you know, oh, generally well. speaking, you're going to, and, and, and it's always someone that's going to know your chat. I mean, if you go up the, the big Asda, you, you're generally served by someone different, if not a bloody robot. Whereas right. if you go to the corner shop, it's someone that's going to know your chat. And yeah. what fascinates me about corner shops is, is that the, the, the shopkeeper can guess your lifestyle from what you buy. So, right. you know, if you buy, like, for example, a bottle of Lucas Aid and, and 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 a box of chocolates. You're probably going in a hospital visit, right? Yep. And if you buy a, a tub of utterly butterly and a copy of Razzle, it's probably best not to ask. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, the, the shopkeeper knows your business, whether they want to or not. Aye. So there's that the, that connection. So all these things, I think, are, we, we totally abuse them for comedy. And Navid Shop and Still Game, it's only like two minutes a show, but already people feel at home when they're in that shop. So. Why can't you have half an hour in that shop? I don't know. It's, you know, you know what? We've been trying to push it on the telly for, oh, for since 2007 and no joy. I, I genuinely don't know why. I'm baffled as to why not. Aye. Because like you said, it's, it's something that everybody's uh, got a connection to. Aye, 100%. You know, so. I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love doing it on the radio. And, you know, there's so much more you can get away with on the radio and so many more ideas you can do. Um, but I know what, you know, the, the, the boys that we've got cast playing my son, so it's so Sheila that plays Alok and uh, and Omar that plays mm-hmm. um, Sanjay. They look like what I want them to look like, you know what I mean? And I, 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 I sometimes think about what my character would look like. I obviously have to try and make him look very different from David. Because um, I remember someone saying to me, oh, right, I fags, mags and bags, that's the spin-off from David, isn't it? I said, I've got more fucking range than that. You know I, mean? <laughs> I mean, I deliberately took all the bass out of my voice and made him like this. No, I didn't like this. But obviously, I don't have as much range as I thought. 
Um, but uh, I would, no, I'd love to do it the telly. Aye. So we'll see what happens. Well, mate, we will see, but I'll see you down in Shield Inge very soon, very my soon, man. Very soon, very soon, my friend. But, yeah. Sanj, you've been a great guest, but before you go, mate, every week on Football Daft, we put our guest Scottish football knowledge to the test with our 90-second quiz. Oofed. Right, here we go. <laughs> David Martindale <laughs> is top with a score of 16. Oofed. In joint, joint second, it's John Sutton, Chick Young, and Hamilton, Scott Martin, all on 15. Mark Wilson and Keith Fasley a third with 14. Other selected scores include Johnny Watson on 10, Jordan Young on 6, Greg Hempel on 5, and Barry from EastEnders on <laughs> 4. And at the bottom, it's singer-songwriter Callum Beatty just last week. He got you only got one. one? Only got, got one. one. Only got one. So is there oh. anybody on that board you want to beat, Sanj? I would like to beat Greg. Aye. Um, I would like, I'd like to get like low teams. That would be my ambition. Aye. I think. Oh, oh, 90, right. So you fancy your chances here then? Ninety seconds, Sanj. You can't pass. You <laughs> must give an answer. We forgot an to answer. tell. Okay. Forgot to tell Callum that last week. He was just sitting going pass, pass. <laughs> 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 well, you should be, you should, boys, what are your questions? You should, I'll I'll call, you should be called Callum Luzi. <laughs> <laughs> So who do you want? Do you want me there? Are you there? Ah, you do if you want. Right, okay, okay then. John, do we have the minute? Do we have the seconds on the clock? We certainly do. Uh, hold on. <clears throat> right, I'll just go. No. <laughs> who are favourites to to win League One? Uh, Party Thistle. What are Arbroath's traditional home colours? Oh Christ! Is it um, black and white? Graham Dorans has just joined which Championship club? Uh, well, I'm going to guess West Bromwich Albion. Probably not. Name one of Hearts' scorers at the weekend. Oh, uh, Suter. How many seasons of still game were there? Seven. Who is Rangers number nine this season? Uh, I'm going to say Tavernier. Hammy the Hamster is which team's mascot? Uh, what nationality is Celtic keeper Vasilis Burkis? Greek. What was the name of your character in Lost at Christmas? Sid. Who is the current manager of Partick Fizzle? Uh, is it Ian McCall? Name one of the Scots in the GB Women's Olympic team. Uh, Louise McMenemy. Who plays their games at Recreation <laughs> Park? Hello. Start Sel- Sel- Albion. Celtic's Europa League opponents, Jablonek, play in which country? Oh, God. Uh, Czech Republic. In which show did you play the character Jigar Tambi? Oh, Hobie City. What team are nicknamed the Blue Toon? Uh, it's not can be, can be. Which football team adopted one of Mental as Anything songs last season? Rangers. <laughs> Who are Montrose's biggest rivals? Oh, is that Brecon? By capacity, what is the largest football ground in Scotland? Pocket. Time! Ooh. Louise McMenemy! <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. The famous actress. <laughs> you can still answer that question if you want, Sandy. He answered that. He did, he answered that. He got answered it, it, but I just, I, I just, I just named an acting colleague. Oh, God. Oh man, as soon as it came out my mouth, I You answered that. a lot anyway, I thought we were going to run out of questions. I, know, I, got all, I, got, I got all of them wrong apart from the ones involving my career. What's that telling you? <laughs> I know, mate. And Celtic. Uh, jo- true, Johnny true. said Parkhead for that last one. He didn't see an acting call aye. in case right. you were getting mixed no, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we'll go right. through your wrong answers, Behave. Sanjeev. Right, okay. uh, Favourites to win League One, Cove Rangers are both playing Maroon. Graham Dorns has just joined in Fermanagh in the Championship. There was nine seasons of still game. Um, Rangers number nine, Jermaine Defoe. Hammy the Hamster is Hamilton's mascot. Mm-hmm. Uh, well done and get your lost Christmas character right. That was said, of course. Uh, Caroline Weir or Kim Uttle, you could have had for the Scots and the GB Women's Olympic mm-hmm. mm-hmm. team. Um, <laughs> the Blue Toon are the name of Peter Heed. And Montrose's biggest rivals are our broth. However, however, mm-hmm. you've done no bad. You have beaten Greg Hempel. Yes. You have beaten Jordan Young. Yes. You've got nine points. Yes. Oh, oh nice one. Oh, nice nice one. one I'm the least plastic of the lovies. So it sounds honestly mate, it's been a great chat. Thanks for coming home. We really appreciate it, Sanjay. Oh, it was a great laugh, guys. Thanks to Brilliant to Sanjay. It was amazing. Thank you very much for coming on, pal. No bother at all. Cheers, bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.